Ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all in the name of the Gaiaza Alumni Network, also called GAN, based here in the UK. The 12 months leading up from July of 2017 to August of 2018 were a very exciting time for us here at GAN. It was a period in which we celebrated two milestone birthdays. The first one was Miss Warren, former headmistress, who turned 90 on the 23rd November 2017. The second one was Miss Janice Hobday, former music and languages teacher, who turned 80 on the 16th of August 2018. We reflected more deeply on the immense and incredible sacrifice made by the CMS missionaries who set up Gayaza in the early years of the 20th century. So, this um, documentary film is dedicated to all the CMS missionaries who worked at Gayaza all the way from 1904 to 2001 when the last one left. It's quite humbling to think of all that they gave up to give us an excellent education at Gayaza, which we all benefited so much from. So, we hope you enjoy watching this as much as we enjoyed making it. Some of the footage was shot at Gayaza, where we were happy to catch up with the progress made since many of us left many decades ago. Uh, we made two visits to Gayaza and we bring you some of the footage from the visits. Um, some of the footage was also captured here in the UK where we were privileged to interview first Miss Warren, learning about her lives, some parts of it we, we wouldn't have imagined that are very fascinating, and later on Miss Janice Hobday who also gives us some insights into our, her own life which is also equally fascinating. The highlights of the 12 months were the two celebrations, the birthday celebrations, Miss Warren's and Miss Hobday's which we bring you some footage as well. So sit back, enjoy, and take some time to think of Gayaza, which is forever in our hearts. So, what was student life like at Gayaza in the 20th century? The main focus, of course, was on study. Gayaza benefited from taking in the best students from primary schools across the nation and generally they came in with a very strong work ethic. So aspirations were always high and studies were taken very seriously. All all-level students aspired to get into the sixth form and all sixth formers aimed to go on to university. Lessons took place in the main classrooms in the labs, in the music room, or in the art room. Home economics was one of the more popular all-level options as girls loved to cook and eat delicacies not served in the main dining room. Private study was very much encouraged and this could take place anywhere, especially during exam time. Prep time was the obligatory time for private study and the army of school prefects ensured that this was observed with quietness and discipline. The Meta Library was the main venue for private study. In the 1990s, however, the Sheila Warren Com Computer Center was opened as Gayaza embraced the information technology revolution. Exams took place in the second and third terms. It could be a very stressful time for both teachers and students, but by and large a rewarding time for most students. The first public exam to be taken at Gayaza was the junior secondary leaving examination taken in 1942. The six candidates performed so well that the examination board wrote to the school wanting to know if they had been given extra time during the English composition paper, which of course they hadn't. 
1950, four students became the first Kaihaza girls to sit for the Cambridge School Certificate exams. They were to achieve equally impressive results and went on to become some of the leading female academics in the country. There was a range of extracurricular activities to engage the girls. Music was the heartbeat of Gayaza, whether as a curriculum subject as a means of entertainment or as a form of worship, it touched the life of every student at some level. Hence, the highlights of any term would include inter-house or inter-class music competitions, performances by candidates for the music exam, performances by the praise choir or Gayaza singers, or indeed public rehearsals for the inter-school music festival, which always saw cutthroat competition between Gayaza, Namagunga and Makerere College School. Headmistresses, Miss Smythe and Miss Corby, as well as teachers, Miss Gayla and Miss Hobday, stand out as the main architects of the highly successful music department at Gayaza during that period. Dance and drama usually went hand in hand with the singing. Every tribal dance in Uganda was staged in the Gayaza Open Theatre. You didn't have to be an Acholi to dance the Ding Ding or a Mugisu to join the lively Embalu dance. The Nativity play, traditionally performed by S1s, and the Easter play by the HSC students were standard fixtures on the annual school calendar. Scottish country dancing, taught by Miss Cutler, brought in a touch of the exotic. The 6 a.m. start to the dancing was probably not the best part of it, but the fun of the music and the dance moves, with Miss Cutler's dog looking on, made it all worthwhile. Miss Cutler and Miss Sally Good, in fact, did a lot to develop the sports sector of Gayaza, introducing a wide range of sports in which Gayaza actually produced some national champions. Clubs organized by the girls included the debating, geography, visiting clubs, and many others. Inter-school visits added to the popularity of the clubs. S4s and S6s were allowed to accept invitations for social evenings at a popular boys' school of their choosing, Budo, Chisubi and Namiliango being the main front runners back in the day. For these and other outings, the school provided transport in the form of the school bus or sometimes even the lorry. In the earlier years, girls and teachers had to travel on foot except when the Saza chief assisted with transport. One particular trip to Namiembe Cathedral and back left the girls feeling a little bit foot sore. Open evenings were another popular form of entertainment. In the open space in front of the senior house, girls would dance to the pop hits of the day. Before the days of Bobby Wine, Chameleon, and Juliana Kanyomozi, the likes of Abba, Boniem, Super Mazembe, and even Tabule would get the girls grooving. Sixth formers were allowed a day out once a term. This was a time to don their smart outfits inadvertently treating the rest of the school to some kind of fashion show. However, because of the insecurity wrought by political turmoil, this practice was done away with and girls had to wear school uniform before leaving school. 
In the 1950s, Miss Cox, in collusion with Dr. Joseph Hutchinson, conceived of a project that came to be known as the Farm Diet Scheme. It aimed to provide nutritionally balanced homegrown food for the students who were in that way being trained as the future feeders of the nation. The project evolved into the Gayaza farm where girls were taught to grow the food they consumed. Following her training in the UK, Christine Sebaduka took overall charge of the catering function and combining exotic and traditional cuisines, she helped propel Gayaza into the top position for the provision of mouth-watering meals in the dining room. All that changed abruptly in 1972 when Idi Amin's economic war triggered the shortages that were to last well after he had gone. It was during this time that Ms. Sebaduka demonstrated amazing resilience and creativity 